Okay, well, I understand that tomorrow, thanks for the invitation. It was uh, a great thing to hear and also a great thing to hear that Alice Hamilton is being celebrated in this fashion that there's an actual day that has been declared Alice Hamilton Day, which is, which is today or is it tomorrow? Today. 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 Yeah, that's great. I mean, uh, gratifying and hopeful and not just because of the recognition it brings to this field of occupational health, which she was a founder of, one of the founders. Uh, when we celebrate her and this report, the Nanine Report from 1910, uh, we also affirm the importance, importance of the kind of occupational health work Ham Hamilton did. <laughs> Uh, crucial as scientific innovation and discovery have been to the making of occupational health and safety uh, here in America, those working in this field can hardly afford to forget just how much it owes to key figures who did not go into the lab very much. That was a knock on Hamilton uh, once she got to Harvard uh, by her colleagues in uh, industrial hygiene. Alice Hamilton was an investigator to be sure, but much of her contribution lay in observations called on the shop floor or in talks with workers, uh, also in her attentiveness to the humane and social side of occupational medicine. Now, it's been a decade, more than a decade now, since I've published my book that uh, uh, on this uh, this history of industrial hygiene, and so I'm, I appreciate the opportunity to to go back to that and also to look at it with kind of a different angle, uh, given my new uh, directions in my research. Um, uh, this, in particular, this comparative study I've been undertaking of lead poisoning in Texas and around an El Paso smelter, and then in Mexico, comparing that with a Mexico smelter and its experience of industrial hygiene as well as lead poisoning. Now, whatever their disagreements about Hamilton, historians who've, who have written about her largely concur about her centrality to the making of modern expertise and uh, occupational, I would add, environmental health. This is partly because of what she did, her contributions to methods, institutions, and yes, the politics of industrial health. They helped to usher in a more effective and persuasive kind of expertise in this field in the US. And it was a major accomplishment given the contentiousness of the workplace in the early 20th century. But her centrality for us historians also comes partly because of what she did not do, of the direction she chose not to take. Uh, in the early 20th century, Alice Hamilton confronted two sets of extremes, two versions of a Scylla and a Charybdis between which she navigated. First and most obvious was this conflict, classic one, the Marxian one, between labor and capital. Uh, her career began in a business environment that for many industries had only recently ratcheted, ratcheted upward in scale toward bigness, the rise of the big corporations in the US. Uh, this was a time when not just industrialists, but many labor unions made little public complaint about uh, disease hazards on the shop floor. In this circumstance, Ham and we'll hear a little bit more about this from Leslie, uh, Hamilton stepped in to become a worker's advocate. Uh, now, the second divide, though, is the one that I'm going to be more preoccupied with today, and that was between expert and lay knowledge itself. This, this divide underwent a considerable deepening in Hamilton's own lifetime. She watched it blossom. Entering into the picture when there was little difference between these two kinds of knowledge when it came to the health effects of the American workplace and in little agreement about what an expertise in the field might entail, uh, she helped change things. Her contributions came in two phases. First, her field studies begin with the Deneen Report and her work that she continued that at the Bureau of Labor, the U.S. Bureau of Labor. Then in 1919, she became a Harvard professor. Uh, and field in investigations for her took a back seat to other work of education, consultation, synthesis. By the time she retired, she had had an important hand in, in building up a full-fledged profession of industrial hygiene with all the attendant uh, methods we know today. Uh, labs and measurement, the clinical and engineering scrutiny, the professional organizations, the training programs. Yet this was a world in which she didn't, I think it's fair to say, she did not entirely feel at home, uh, given where, the, where she had started. Now, uh, to get some perspective on Ham Hamilton's earliest work with the Dean Commission and the U.S. Bureau of Labor, I want to draw a comparison 
at the end of this little talk with another study of lead poisoning that also became famous, 